So here we are, we're going to um, do RSA, and this one is just so you understand the RSA attack, so RSA encryption. So let me just get a terminal, okay. And, um, all right, so here's the story. In RSA, uh, you have a public key, which is two numbers, N and E. And you have a private key, which is D. And here's how they're created. And we're going to have a whole chapter in the textbook about it, but you might as well get some practice. But the great thing about RSA is the math is extremely simple. You first, you find two large primes, P and Q. Then you multiply them, and that's N. And N is the people, part people usually talk about as the public key. There's another part, which is E. But in practice, you typically always just use the same number for E, 65, 5, 37. It's always the same. So uh, it's, it is technically part of the public key, but in fact, it's probably uh, always to set that number. So that's the thing, n is p times q. Now, that's, if you publish that public key, anybody can send you secrets. They can encrypt stuff with the public key, and the only person that can decrypt is a person with the private key. And the private key can only be calculated if you know p and q. So that's the essence of it. Public RSA makes it possible for you to receive secret messages. If you want to send them, the person at the other end has to make their own private key and public key pair and send you the, the public key so you can send them messages. That's the problem with it. It's one way. It's a way to receive secrets. Now, to get your private key, the calculation is a little annoying. You calculate the phi function here, um, which is uh, Euler's totient, which is just p minus 1 times q minus 1. And what this is actually is the number... Um, you cannot use all n numbers of the n. You're going to have a ring of modulus n that you're working on here, but you can't use them all because since it's the product of two primes, if you were to use, for example, the value p and then multiply it by something, it would not hit all the values. It would just hit multiples of p and go around and hit the same multiples of p again. So there are um, all the multiples of p and all the multiples of q, and they both uh, collide at 1. So p this is p squared plus q squared minus p minus q minus 1, and that's the point. This is the actual number of those n values that you can use for public key encryption. You can't use them all, because some of them would destroy information. So you choose the public exponent epsilon just so that it's relatively prime, and like I say, 65, 537 is the number almost everybody always uses, and you calculate the private key so that d times e is 1 mod phi, and that's the modular inverse which there are algorithms to calculate it, but you can only do it if you know P and Q. Because you need to know P and Q to get phi. So anyway, we're just going to do this for simple primes so you can see it. So we're going to use P of 7 and Q of 23. So if you do that, let's go to Python 3. All right. So there you are, P, Q, and N. So here's the public key is N, 161. All right. Now, phi of n, Euler's totient, is just p minus 1 times q minus 1. So you can figure that out, and that's 132. So n, the public key is 161, and this phi number, Euler's totient, is 132, and that includes information about p and q. This is a secret. The only thing public is this 161. All right, so now we're going to use a public exponent. Now, you could, 3 would be fine, 5, would, any prime number would be fine. 3 would be fine, 5 would be fine, 65, 537 would be fine. We're going to use E equals 5 in this example. So now we need to find a decryption key so that D times E is 1 mod 5. And so um, here's one way to do it. So if E equals 5, all right, and I can print. Now I can just try multiplying E by numbers to try to get 1. So 20 times e is 100. All right, and 21 times e is 105. Now it's, um, all right, now I'm going to make it modular. So you use percent for modulus, and that means you're working on a ring. You go from 0 up to 131, and 132 is just 0 again, just like going around a clock. That's how modular arithmetic works. So if I multiply this number by bigger and bigger numbers, and I make it modulus phi, um, all right, why did that? Oh, I see, that because of uh, Python 3, okay. I have to put parentheses around this, there we go. There, so if I do that, it, 21 times E is 105. Modulus phi, it's still 105, but if I just try going up higher, 22, um, 25, 
26 and 27, see it wrapped around. It went over 130 and wrapped around to three. So I multiplied my um, five, 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 until I passed zero and I hit three, so I missed it. I, I'm trying to hit one, so I'm gonna to have to go around again to try to hit one, maybe several times. And you can do that with a loop. So you can also just do it this way. This, this is what we do, you go through 20 to 27, it'll go past 131 and hit three. So we're gonna to have to use larger values so around 25 got us once around. Around 50 will get us twice around. So if you just try numbers around 50, see here we are, the next time around, we hit one. So 53 is the inverse of five. This is the part that gives you, can give you a headache about modular arithmetic. Because you are on a ring like this, if you multiply a number by five, it will change it. And if you want to get back to the original number, you multiply it again by 53 because 53 times five is one in modular. That's the madness of this. That's modular arithmetic. This, because there is no division. See, if you multiply by the encryption key, you would like to divide by the encryption key. But there is no division in modular arithmetic. But there is multiplication, and you find a multiplication that will undo the previous multiplication. That is what's called a multiplicative inverse. And that's the game. That's why it's a little bit screwy to find this number D, but once you find it, it is the number that will decrypt things that have been encrypted with the number E. And we'll, we see it go here. So here's the game. Megan's public key, she has the private key we just figured out, seven and 23. So she calculates the public key, the phi, the E, and the D. These are the things we just did. So she's now ready to receive secret messages. So she publishes to the cloud a public key. Anybody can now send her secrets. She has N and E, 161 and five. So Cuball wants to send this message, hi. Now you have to find some way to turn letters into numbers, and so we're just gonna encode it with ASCII, letter by letter. So it's 72, 105, 33, and we're just gonna encrypt each number separately. This is not how you actually do it for normal RSA, but it's a way to do it for this project. So here's how you do encryption. You take you N and E are the public key, you take the input, and take it to the power E mod N. That's how you encrypt things. So, all you have to do is take this 7210533 and take them to the E mod N. And that turns them into 151, 119, 157. So that's the encrypted message. Now to decrypt it, so X is the, is the original plain text message, Y is the encrypted message, and to decrypt it, you have to take Y to the D mod N, D being that secret key that will undo to raise anything to the power E, like we said before. So all you have to do is set D equal to 53 and run it through that and you'll get back to the original numbers. The original message was 7210533. And here you recover them, 7210533. That's why I say the math is extremely simple. The only part that's confusing is that ring trick, but you encrypt with X to the E mod N, you decrypt with Y to the D mod N. So it is pretty easy and pretty simple. And so there are some things to do here. Here's some other values to use. Calculate the public and private keys. And the public key is the, uh, is the, uh, the flag. And here you've got a message sent by Megan and you have to decrypt it. And there's a couple things to do there. So you can work those through using this logic and it gives you a little bit of practice doing this with very small numbers, none of this is secure, of course. To be secure, as we know, RSA keys have to be like 2,048 bits now. And these are small numbers like, you know, seven and 100 and stuff, so they're not secure at all. You could easily brute force them, but it does let you see the process. And um, the only re thing you have to do to make RSA work beyond this is run with, work with much larger numbers and handle issues of padding. So that's, uh, that's C401, and that's 